Hello, my beautiful and intellectually curious love bugs. Today, we are answering your questions about the periodical cicadas because Brudex is coming. Some of these questions I didn't even know the answer to. I had to leaf through and diligently read the scientific literature because you love bugs ask me some really big brain questions. If you like big brain questions and you like big brain answers, feel free to join my learning community on Facebook called the SciHive references it's in the references down below before we get too far along here i should probably define what cicadas are especially if you aren't really familiar with cicadas there aren't a ton in your area you don't even know what bugs are and you're here to learn about insects hi welcome to the channel so cicadas are in the order hemiptera this is a big group it includes the true bugs like your stink bugs and your assassin bugs. It includes the cicadas and the hoppers, which are all grouped into one suborder. And it also includes some things like pests that you may be more familiar with, like aphids and white flies and scale insects. Although not all of them in that group are pests. In fact, most of them aren't. Cicadas and the hoppers are in the suborder Alcanorinca. Inside that suborder, cicadas are their own family, cicadidae. I'm pretty sure that if I threw up a whole bunch of photos of cicadas all over the screen, you'd all, you'd all be like, yeah, those, those all kind of look like cicadas. Cicadas just kind of look like cicadas. Now that we know what cicadas are, we can now start talking about the periodical ones. Robert asked if periodical cicadas is just one species or a couple different species. There are over 3,000 species of cicada. That is so many cicadas. And some of them are really beautiful, especially from Ecuador and also from Asia. Although I think the periodical cicadas are also really quite beautiful with their bright red eyes. And today's look, I decided to, you know, mimic their fashion sense because it's just on point. Of the 3,000 plus cicadas that you can find in the world, only one genus contains the periodical cicadas, both the 13-year variety and the 17-year variety. This genus is Magicicada. There are seven species in that genus. That's right, out of the 3,000 plus cicadas you can find all over the world, only seven are periodical. By the way, welcome back to another video on my channel. Hello, my name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs. That is my master's degree haphazardly taped to my wall. And I am living in Ecuador, where normally I'm toting your butt around the jungle to look at some of our cicadas and lots of other beautiful insects and some vertebrates sometimes. But of course, that is a little, little bit of a struggle right now. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Feel free to like this video and subscribe and do all of the things because you care about me and you care about bugs and you like learning about things. All right, moving on. Those seven species of periodical cicadas, all of them are found in the eastern United States. So that's your magical bug phenomenon. I have some people come and be like to Ecuador and be like, oh, my bugs in the United States are boring and I was one of those people. But I think it's just when you live with them, you don't realize, realize how amazing they are. And this, friends in the United States, this is your bug that is really beautiful and has a really crazy biology and that people travel to see. The 17-year cicada broods can be found in the northeastern United States and the 13-year broods can be found in the southeastern of the United States. You also have cicadas that emerge every year like the dog day cicadas, you're gonna hear them all the time. People ask me in Ecuador if we have periodical cicadas, but now you know the answer. The answer is no. Our cicadas usually run on the time scale of about like one to five-ish years, although a lot of their biologies haven't, hasn't been particularly well studied. Now let's just get into some basic morphology and some basic behavior of these cicadas. First question is, how do they make their sound and how can you tell that it's a cicada that's calling? Most cicadas in my experience being the United States and also tropical America is that they just buzz. They have like a very degrading buzzing sound, especially some of our cicadas here in Ecuador. Like it, it, like people will come and ask why it sounds like there's chainsaws in the middle of the rainforest. So if it sounds like your trees are buzzing and screaming for no reason, 
those would be your cicadas. The periodical cicadas can buzz up to 100 decibels. And some cicadas can buzz up to 120 decibels. That's like starting to cause you permanent ear damage. So they are loud boys. How do they make their sound? I have a whole video on it right here if you'd like to check it out. But pretty generally, they have a membrane that is under the wings. Only the males have it. And this is called the timbal. The timbal vibrates. It's not two parts that are rubbing together. It is a membrane that is vibrating, which makes the noise. Male cicadas are basically nothing but a crunchy boom box flying around. Their trachea system and other spaces inside of them have basically been modified to reverberate the sound as much as possible to make sure it's as loud as possible to attract the sexy sexy females. The females will click with their wings, they'll make a little snappy sound. I guess the mic is here. They'll make a little snappy sound and that is how the females respond to the males. I can imitate the female's wing tip with a snap of my fingers. I'll bring you back. Joshua asks what they eat while they're underground. So if you do not know the life cycle of the cicada, the cicada has a nymphal stage where it will live underground from anywhere between 1 and 17 years, depending on the species like we just talked about, and then crawl up and emerge as an adult. Sometimes they make these mud tubes, as Charlotte asked, and they're called turrets or chimneys. Sometimes the periodical cicadas make them, sometimes they don't. It's more common to find those turrets in wetter terrain or really mud, like muddy areas. Although exactly what the function of the chimneys or the turrets is, is unclear. If I were to take a guess, it would probably just stabilize the tube and make sure the tube doesn't collapse while the cicada is trying to crawl out. Or maybe if it's like high flood or like lots of water it might prevent water from you know, entering the tube, but it hasn't been formally studied, so that's my opinion, so you can take it with as many grains of salt as you want. All right, back to, what do they eat underground? The cicadas sit on the tree roots and don't move at all. Like, basically not ever. The only time they really move is to dig their way out of the ground with those big claws and then climb up something so they can emerge as an adult. While they are living underground, they are eating xylem, which is a plant fluid. So there's phloem and xylem in your trees, if you remember your eighth grade biology class, college biology class, some biology class, somewhere maybe along the way. Anyway, there's two types of plant fluids. Phloem, which is your sappy stuff that has sugar in it your products from photosynthesis, and you have xylem, which is water and nutrients. Cicadas are eating xylem. Gut symbionts of cicadas aren't thought to affect their 13 or 17 year life cycle, but the gut symbionts are really important for them to develop essential nutrients that they need that they're not getting from their diet. But that's a whole other video about gut endosymbionts in insects. I haven't had any of you love bugs specifically ask me this question, but I have heard it a lot and I have been asked, do the cicadas when they come out in this mass emergence cause any damage to the plants? And uh, no, yeah, not really. Um, if it's a mature tree, it's fine. It's really just fine. Everything is fine. It, your eardrums are gonna take the most damage out of everything. Jared asks, why do they have red eyes? And isn't that a great question? I tried looking for this specifically for cicadas and I came up with basically nothing. <laughs> there is so much insect stuff that hasn't been studied. So if you are interested in insect coloration or insect vision, there is a whole field that you can get a PhD in calling your name just for you. Jared, come study us. Doing some research on other insects that have been studied with red eyes like <laughs> flies and fruit flies, the red pigment omnichrome in the fruit fly eyes seems to help it absorb more blue and green light and makes the fly be able to see blue and green better and is basically repelled by red light. Uh, if you're an insect uh, and, you, and you're looking for green things or blue things, then that's going to be particularly helpful. So I'm guessing that it's working probably pretty similar. While it hasn't been exactly studied, we can extrapolate from other insects to the cicadas. So that'd be my best guess. Uh, the red eyes are helping it see better in the blue green spectrum. 
And this is the question so many people ask me, but how do they even know? How do they know that 13 or 17 years have passed? Let me know if the cicadas are coming to an area near you down below in the comments and let me know if you are excited for the sky screamers or, you know, not so excited for the sky screamers. You, me, frogs, insects, dogs, mold, bacteria with that don't even have brains, we all have circadian rhythms, which is calibrated by a molecular clock. You can throw fruit flies in, in like pure pitch black and they will still have a roughly 24 hour circadian rhythm cycle. We can see this with fungus. There's a certain type of fungus that grows and blasts spores out every 24 hours. And we can do this with humans too. Like our humans have a roughly 24 hour circadian rhythm. It is calibrated by blue light, but we have it and it will be okay for a while if it is not calibrated. Looking at all of you gamers who stay up until five o'clock in the morning and sleep all day. Since all organisms have the circadian rhythms, both cicadas and trees have them. This is really important for the trees because the trees need to know, you know, when it's time to release leaves and when it's time to drop their leaves because it's going to get cold. Obviously this is a Northern hemisphere phenomenon where the trees for the most part lose and regrow their leaves. The cicadas, keep track of these cycles when the trees are producing leaves and when the trees are dropping their leaves. There's usually some sort of change in the phloem and the xylem content and the cicadas can just tell when the trees are going through these natural cycles. The cicadas then count them. How do they count them? That's a question for you, friend, who wants to study in cicadas and earn a PhD in cicadas. In 2007 in Cincinnati between January and February there was a super super hard freeze so the circadian rhythm and the cycles of the tree foliating or producing their leaves was disrupted. Basically in January like the tree started to do their like oh winter is kind of almost over we should start thinking about producing leaves cycles and then there was a huge long cold freeze in between January and February and the trees went back to their like, oh no, it's winter, we're gonna like stop all the things. And then in February started to build up the leaves and the, and the, the, the cycle for making tree stuff again. This triggered the cicadas to emerge a year early because the cicadas counted that the trees started to do their thing twice. So it must have been two years. And it wasn't, so 17 year cicadas came out in 16 years uh, because the trees tricked them. This is a really important note which is like phenology and which is like the study of organisms and how they relate to each other and their seasonality and stuff like that. There's a whole video about that here. But as we have issues with climate change and we're getting severe weather and we're getting different weather patterns, it'd be really interesting to see how not only cicadas but other insects are affected. All right, so they can count to 17 whether or not 17 years have actually passed, they can count 17 tree cycles for the at least. How do they know after the 17 years or the 13 years of tree cycles that it is then time to get out of the dirt because they don't want to come up too early, the ground is frozen, they don't want to come up too early because there might be a, a sudden frost or a sudden freeze and then they'll all die. The cicadas know when to come out of the ground when the ground soil temperatures are 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius for those of you who lived in civilized places, when that temperature is constant for at least two weeks, the cicadas then know that spring is here and to emerge and leave the dirt and transform into their beautiful adult cicada lives. We think that in other parts of the world there must be other environmental cues, like for example in Ecuador our soil temperature is pretty much the same all the time. However, we do have a rainy season and a, a slightly less rainy season. <laughs> You know, it only rains like once a day instead of all day. We think that maybe soil humidity or some other soil composition or something like that is triggering the cicadas to let them know when it's time to come out. For example, on the coast in Ecuador, April is the time that all our Zamara cicadas come out and buzz their little butts off. There is some evidence to suggest that the 13 year cicadas have a dominant trait 
And these 17 year cicadas are a recessive trait. However, there was only one study and it hasn't been looked at ever since. And they're if you're interested in a PhD, start studying some cicada genetics. The broods are named a little bit probably not like you're thinking. So brood X is coming and that just means brood 10. The last time brood 10 came out was in 2004 and so 2021 is there is like when the timer is ticking and then not that I can do the math and I probably should have done this before I did this video, but in 17 more years, brood 10 is going to emerge again. The broods are numbered using Roman numerals and it's not like every year it's a different higher number. Like we're not gonna get to brood like 100 because it's not like every year we get it from brood. It's like brood 10 emerged, laid eggs and those eggs of brood 10 in 17 years are also going to be brood 10. You can check this chart by Wikipedia, you can see which broods are coming out near you. And finally, the last question is, but why? Why 13 years? Why 17? That is weird. Max Wolf asks if there are predators that have figured out this life cycle. And that's a really good question because that was one of our hypotheses for a really long time. And you'll still see that written that is kind of like one of the general hypotheses tossed around is that 13 and 17 years are prime and prime numbers are hard to sync up predators for. This would prevent the cicadas from having probably a specialized predator or a specialized parasitoid because then that predator would also have to evolve a 13 or 17 year life cycle, which is kind of improbable. There isn't a ton of support for this hypothesis. It's just one that seems to make sense. One of the problems with this hypothesis is that cicadas aren't toxic, so basically anything can eat them. Like literally anything. Like spiders can eat them and pigeons can eat them and reptiles can eat them. Basically, they are just flying protein and fat boxes that are too stupid and too slow to move anywhere. Pretty generally, your cicadas that come out every year or every couple years, like the dog day cicadas, if you get pretty close to them, they're like, bro, peace, I'm out. And they're really good at avoiding predators. However, the periodical cicadas are apparently just like sitting there and are like, whatever, bro, just eat me. And part of that strategy is just like, there's so many of them, like 1.5 million cicadas come out of one acre of land. Billions of cicadas are coming to a state near you. But just cause they come out in so many and there's so many of them at the same time, like spider bro is like, I literally cannot eat another cicada. Like you give me another cicada, I'm gonna throw this thing in your face. That's just it. Like all the predators are just really well fed and there's just so many cicadas that literally a billion of them can't be eaten. So some of them are just gonna make it to reproduce. This is not the only insect that does this mass emergence and overwhelms the predator population. Another great example of this are mayflies. Many mayflies only live for 24 hours. Some can live up to 72 and some live for a week, but many mayflies have the behavior where they will all emerge at the same time and overwhelm the predator population. How many you may ask? Well, you can ask these lovely folks in Mississippi who literally had a snowplow dead mayfly carcasses off the road. Pretty sure that's the only time Mississippi has ever gotten use out of their snowplow and it wasn't for snow, it was for dead mayflies. This kind of predator overwhelming strategy is not uncommon. However, the 13 and the 17 year is. So it's a little bit hard to say, oh yes, exactly. These cicadas evolved this 13 to 17 year cycle just to avoid predators because like lots of other things avoid predators with mass emergence and they don't have crazy life cycles. Another thesis which has been backed up using mathematical models is that it prevents the broods from hybridizing with each other. If you have 17 year cycles and different broods that are emerging at different 17 and 13 year intervals, like for example, brood X is this year, it prevents these cicadas from mating with each other and just kind of making hybridized patterns. <laughs> because as we just established, they have nothing going for them to protect themselves. Like they're not poisonous, they're not venomous, and they just sit there and get eaten. So if you have cicadas 
coming out every year at lower populations, most likely they're going to get eaten. And we do see that with straggler populations. Sometimes stragglers come out late or early and they basically just get decimated and don't really reproduce that well and don't really survive that well. And if you are making sure that your cycle is 17 years, that means all of you are going to come out every 17 years and you are going to overwhelm the predator population instead of like, oh, we had like, a quarter of our population come out this random year and that wasn't enough of us and all the birds ate us. There is some flexibility or some plasticity in the genetics and when they are actually triggered to emerge. As I was saying, there are some stragglers, for example. And so it is important to note that it, while like the majority of the cicadas do come out every 13 and 17 years at exactly the same time, just note that there are some <laughs> peasants who didn't quite get the message and that this mechanism of this 13 or 17 years can be selected for and can still possibly be selected against. Maybe we won't have 17 years cicadas some million years in the future. So there you have it, the two hypotheses. One is that it prevents hybridization between the broods, which keeps population densities really high to overwhelm predator populations. And the other is to possibly avoid predators, especially specialized predators, because specialized predators, it would be really hard for them to evolve a cycle of 13 or 17 years. So there you go. Neither hypothesis has been 100% agreed upon or proven, but those are our best hypotheses for right now. If you're interested in tracking the periodical cicadas in a state near you, you can check out this website right here. It is run by Yukon and some really interested professors who study just cicadas. In case you want a PhD, you know who to contact. And they are keeping track of the broods, where they're emerging, what times, and also some of those stragglers. Let me know if you have any other questions about the periodical cicadas or any other cicadas in the comments below, and I will be happy to answer them. All right, love bugs, I will see you very soon next week, probably with another video. Bye.